The World of Woke. Former Ofsted head Amanda Spielman stood down last year, claiming the organisation and schools had too much focus on staff with their wellness and tired maxim of hashtag be kind dreaded throughout the system. She went on to say there's far too much concern with woke well-being than the actual users of such public services, i.e. the school pupils. Joining me to discuss this in the studio is broadcaster and friend Narinda <laughs> Call. Narinda, with the strikes going on with teachers and stuff and they're being under pressure, is, is this woman right? Is Amanda right? Is, is this country become a place where you can't just have difficult conversations anymore? I think there's a lot to unpack in this. And had I not listened to the podcast that she did with Rachel Johnson, where she says this, I stop, think... Stop promoting other people's podcasts. Oh, sorry. OK, show. well, right. this is where stop she it. said these comments. <laughs> so had I not listened to that, I would have said, how dare she? She's insensitive. And she is. Because, look, a teacher committed suicide on her watch. But when you listen to the podcast, she explains... And it's still insensitive. She doesn't really take accountability, but she's trying to say that actually, we, when we're trying to protect kids, we have to be able to have difficult conversations and create a balance. Except she has to take accountability. A woman committed suicide. So there is a fault in the system. And the other thing she was saying was that actually, all organisations, Metropolitan Police, they have inspections. But when the report comes out not in their favour, it falls on broader shoulders. When it's a school, it's just one person. So she does acknowledge that. However, come on. Is Ofsted needed she anymore? Can't... Like my, oh. uh, my, my teacher, I'll speak to my teacher, he's probably watching now, Mr Ewing, fantastic teacher from Hagley RC High. He's moved <laughs> schools and I think somewhere else. But I remember speaking to him a few months ago about this. And he was saying, basically, when you know it's Ofsted coming round, the teachers all know that the inspectors come in. So it's like you're putting on a new lick of paint, you're making sure that everything's perfect, and you're terrified as a teacher well, if, you, exactly. if, you, if you don't get that outstanding... And it's not just the week before, this goes on for months before. And actually, the, even the wording, uh, inadequate, poor, yeah. below average, it's terrible. And if that's a one head teacher, come on, it, needs, then, re, it needs a whole, whole but then, overhaul. But then you're saying that uh, Amanda... Is, is right in saying we have to be able to have these conversations and say, well, actually, your score is, your school is terrible and I'm going to give it one star. I Whereas think... Your school's great. No, I think what, you, what she's saying is that she was taking no accountability and having no humility. At the end of the day, she was talking about a system, she was talking about a procedure as if humans aren't involved. And well, we shouldn't be too bothered about adults. Adults should be able to take whatever we tell them because it's children we're protecting. But she wasn't really taking into account adults also. I know people aren't going to like it who won't watch this show have feelings. You can't just say, you're inadequate. It needs a whole overhaul. It really does. Because they come in like they're, the, you know, they come in like the army. And she was also trying to say, actually, the inspectors are very nice people. And they and they look at things with, with compassion. They don't. What if you get a bad inspector who's actually quite horrible? Well, listen, I understand what you're saying about the teacher who committed, uh, who took her own life. I Is understand. it Ruth Perry? I understand that. But again, these difficult conversations we have to have are that the, the priority has to be the kids. That's going to be it. You've got two kids yourself. The priority has to be, are my kids in a decent school? No, are my, are, but I don't... Are, are my kids getting taught properly? Yes, but I don't also want my kids to be in a school that the teachers are that petrified of some offset inspector coming who knows nothing about the school and going, tick, 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 no, we, we're downgrading you. That's a lot of pressure. Yeah. That's not correct. There's got to be... We've got to look at this differently. But this culture of not being able to have difficult conversations... I think you, what you she was receive, saying... You receive it on social media all the time. Yeah. You say a statement on, on, on X... Yes. ...and then everyone starts harassing you... Oh, and, I get and, a and, complete yeah, pile-on, yeah. You get a yeah. pile-on. I kind of like winding them up as well now as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. But <laughs> is, is, is social media not part of this problem, that we can't have honest conversations because people are so polarised on every single thing. If you say... If people are now scared to say the truth because they're scared they'll get attacked. Luckily, here, Well, I'm not in scared of saying the truth. We're not yeah. scared of saying the truth. I don't think people are scared enough of saying the truth. But I think what Amanda Speedman was saying in that in that podcast, she was also referring to, um, you know, the, the school with um, Bibel Singh, where she said the one Muslim, yeah. Muslim student, and she also brought up, and this was really interesting, I didn't know about this, a school in Birmingham that is semi-faith, um, it's not uh, an Islamic school, but it was mostly Muslims. And actually, they would, were, were given an inadequate report because female students were actually being treated second, like second-class sisters and yeah. compared to male. And yeah. she was saying that actually, in schools, it's got to not just be... We've got to be able to compromise, and parents aren't willing to compromise these days, and it should just be about the education. I do kind of agree with that. All right, let's move on to uh, Scotland. 
Oh, you yes. Know, you know, what about this hate bill that everyone's talking about? But one of our people from our parish here at Talk Sports, Adam McCoist, he has mocked the, uh, the new hate bill, actually. He's been pretty scathing about it and pretty direct. Let's have a listen to what Adam McCoist said about it. We've got a hate bill, by the way. We've just, a hate bill's been passed in the country yesterday. And I can guarantee you, next Sunday at Ibrooks, I, along with 48,000, will be committing a breach of that hate bill <laughs> in the particular Rangers Celtic game that we're all going to. Yeah. It's <laughs> madness. He's right. He is oh. right. God, JJ, how can you say he's right? He's uh, right. Ali McCoy's, what world are you living in? The right? real world. No, OK, so therefore we should never have laws. We should never try right. and... What are you talking about? He's actually admitting by saying that... He's going to go to a football match, match and he's, he's going to say gonna, hateful things. That is... And that's OK. That's not OK, listen, listen, Ali listen. McCoy. It's think, not OK. Why is it not OK? Shall I tell you why it's not OK? Why is it not OK? We, and why we do need a hate bill. Love, love, tell you love why? and hate are natural no. emotions. It's OK so to then, go to a football match and shout abuse at some players. That's OK. It's OK to go to a football match and shout abuse okay. at some players. That's not OK. Yes, that, it is. Long, long, that's long, not saying it's OK to do it, racial abuse. No, it's not the same thing. It's not the same thing. If I see a red-headed player on the pitch, I'm going to shout something about him being ginger. No, you're not. So you know, I am going to. You know more about football. I don't even know much. Celtic and Rangers. It's actually Irish racism. Yeah. They're singing songs Religious about buzz. potato famines and go back home. It's not acceptable. Because if you accept that, you accept this. Also, let me give you another point of view. OK, well, you've got, I don't know, motorway laws. You can only drive 70 on a motorway. Mm -hmm. Are you going to say, well, I'm not going to ignore that. I'm just going to go along and do I what do, I want. I do what I do. What I do what right. I do 75 sometimes on the motorway. Right, so, OK, but it's, that's against the law. I don't so, say it's law, but I'm still going to do have, it. But we have a law to try uh, to save lives on a motorway. You drive 70, you're not allowed to drive above that. You can try and break the law. So Ali McCoy is just basically saying, we're all horrible, we're all racist, and we're going to say what we want. How it's a do... football match. The thing, things are very different at football Is matches. he a presenter on talk? Talk sport, yeah. Wow. He's a former footballer. He, he knows the game pretty well. He knows, I, he might he knows know what the he's game, talking about. But he's actually he knows just... what he's talking about. The point is, look, the point he's making is, is, uh, is that the, the, the law, this new hate crime bill, is not going to go there and arrest all those football fans for chanting Hobbes. Well, of course not, but you have to have well, some pointless. kind of law. No, well, then, it's no, not, it's when pointless. we have a race relations act, I still get called the P word, and I'm sure you get called the N word. You still got to have an act in place. No, to, no one's, no one's that me. Do, they're, too, got... they're too scared of me. It doesn't happen. No, but it does happen to people. Look, look Narinda, so you have Narinda, to have a law in place. Narinda, I think Adam McCoy makes a very good point. And by the way, no. I'm just joking about speeding on the motorway. I always stick to the speed limit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm a very law-abiding citizen. Narinda, you'll be joining us a bit later. Thank you for now. And that was the explosive world of woke. The world of woke.